To explain floating data extraction, we'll make use of a set of letters sent by attorneys to a bank. These letters are related to mortgages. Because the letters are sent from lawyers all over the country, the layout varies a lot. We're interested in the loan account number and the reference. Look how the loan account number, marked in green, floats around on the letters. Same with the reference, marked in red. The data is there, but it's just all over the place. Traditional zonal extraction is not going to work on floating data like this. We will use MetaTool to read the full text of each letter and then find the account number by looking for a pattern. The account number always starts with letters, followed by a slash or a dash, followed by a 5 to 8 digit number and ending with a slash or a dash and 1 to 2 digits. We'll find the attorney's reference by looking for a line containing keywords such as RF, RE, REF, borrower or property. This approach works very accurately. Let's scan a batch of 80 different attorney letters. For time's sake, let's fast forward. During export, MetaTool reads the full text of each letter and then extracts the account number and reference. On a modern PC, this takes less than a second per page. Now let's fast forward to check the result. We use the extracted account number to name each PDF file. We also created a CSV file with all the extracted data. As you can see, for every letter we extracted the account number and reference. This is also very easy to set up. To show how it works, we'll define the job from scratch. We create a new job and name it Floating Data. Let's configure the scanner and select the automatic profile. We'll create a document per sheet scanned. When I'm configuring a job, I always disable the delete batch option, etc. So I can test my settings with the same batch several times. We scan some samples to test our settings. I need three index fields. One to hold the full text of the page. one for the account number and one for the reference. In the Job Setup tab, we select MetaTool as the export connector and press Setup. We add an advanced rule to OCR the full text of each page. Because we know all the documents are written in English, let's limit the character set to characters used in the English language. Press test to see the result. Somewhere in the full text is the reference and the loan account number. With a few additional rules, we will extract this information from the full text and place it in the account number and reference fields. First, we'll extract the account number. We copy the full text in the account number field with a set field value rule. When we test these two rules, we see the full text is now also placed in the account number field. You can also click on the value to open it up in a pop-up box. Here you can inspect the result in more detail or make selections. To extract the account number, we'll use a find worth with mask rule. To help configuring the mask, it's good to have a sample of all possible formats close by. Based on these samples, we see that all account numbers always start with the letter, so we select a letter from the setup list. The next four characters can be a digit, letter, slash or dash. Let's make use of a custom character mask, which you can define yourself. To define the custom character set, just press Custom and select the characters you want to detect. In this case, uppercase letters, digits, a dash or a slash. 
Next four characters are always numeric, so we add four digits to the mask. The last six characters are again custom type characters, which we already defined. They can be digits, letters, slashes or dashes. Looking at the samples, we see that the minimum length of an account number is 12 characters. Some letters contain a reference that looks like the account number and could be confused with it. However, lookalike references are always positioned before the account number. So by selecting Keep Last Match, we will skip any numbers that look like an account number and we'll find the correct one. Let's test our new rule. And yes, we found the account number. Let's test the other samples. When you switch on auto test, you can just browse through the samples and the rules are automatically processed. It makes it easy to check the results on all the samples. With these three easy to configure rules, we are able to reliably extract the account number from a variety of attorney letters. It'll take only two additional rules to also extract the reference. We switch off auto test and add a set field value rule to copy the full text in the reference field. In other words, we only OCR'd the full page once with the first rule and placing the full text in its own index field, we can use the result multiple times. In this case, once to extract the account number and now to extract the reference. The next rule is a find line with words rule to extract a line containing specific words. And that's exactly what we need to extract the line containing the reference. As usual, it's good to have a variety of samples close by to define the correct keywords. We're looking for lines containing the word our ref, re, ref, borrower, or property. Sometimes the attorney puts your ref in front of the account number, like in this example. To avoid confusion with the attorney's own reference, we're going to exclude all lines with the words your ref. We simply type your ref in the reject words, and in that way, any lines containing your ref will be ignored. Let's test our new reference extraction rules. And they indeed pass the test. They also work fine on all other samples. We only need to add one more rule. We want to use the account number as the file name. But many account numbers contain a slash, like in this example. And when a file name contains a slash, it creates a subfolder. So we are going to add a replace text rule and replace all slashes with dashes in the account number. When we test the rule and we compare the result with the original value, we see how the slash was replaced with a dash. We already defined the validation rules and we'll skip their setup. Please check the videos about validation to learn more. We want to export the documents to a folder called floating data and use the loan account number to name them. We also want to generate a CSV file. In the CSV file, we'll include the document number, the loan account number, and the attorney's reference information. We name the CSV file index.csv and place it in the same export folder as the images. We press OK and export our test batch to check the result. Our document set has been correctly exported in PDF format, with each file named after their account number. The CSV file contains all extracted data. This video just touched the surface of what you can do with Metatool. Press any of the buttons below to learn more.